Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and today we have something that I've been looking forward to. This is the new Shadow Sea two-player starter set, the Battle of Deadwood Forest. This is brought to us by Antimatter Games. They got this funded and produced through their last, or somewhat recent, Kickstarter. I'll show you what's included here. So, you have Axemon Empire models, you've got... A golem right there in the middle. You've got your Axvalon ladies. You've got also three Draken and Legion models. You've got the one cool looking dude here with ether pistol and blade. You got a big salamander type. And I don't remember what the other one is. I'm sure he's here somewhere. But you also get these two Ripper Claw lizards along with all the other necessary stuff to play. So why don't we pop the box open and see what's inside? So here are the contents of the box itself. So we have what looks to be our Axabon models right here, along with all the cards necessary to play. We've got the Draken and Legion models here. And I'm assuming there's some lizards in there. There is, oh, it's kind of nice, a complimentary download two complimentary downloads for the PDF if you contact them. So if you do get this, take a look at that, contact them. I have plenty of rule books for Shadow Sea, so it's not a problem here. You have a set of counters. That's always nice and handy to have. These were included in a lot of the original starters, but it is nice to have it all in one convenient location. Dice, you always use three dice since this is based on the Song of Blades and Heroes engine. And that is what is going to be the pusher luck on as to how you activate your models. We'll let you read more about that. Well, <laughs> I think this was supposed to be full of air at one point, but yeah, it didn't do a whole lot of good there. Okay, we have a Warband record sheet for all of your upgrades and artifacts. Okay, nice and handy. Actually, it looks like there is a second one here so one for each side because obviously we have a skirmish game here you have your range sticks so this is very important if you've played any of the ganesha games or any of the games based off of their engine specifically with song of blades and heroes so i know we've got multiples of these laying around but again always nice to have i think there's only one set but that's okay we have a dry erase marker i'm assuming so we can mark up the cards Okay, I don't know what that is on the cover. Scientific operations, huh? Okay, so this is a bit new for me, but it looks to seem we have various actual objectives for use in the game. That's pretty cool, and I'm assuming that's unique to this set, and then there's another set in the Deep Wars one, which we'll get to eventually. I don't know what this is. I'm assuming this is actually terrain. So we have a big sheet, and unfortunately it's kind of thin. It's like big, not, not poster paper, but like a, a matte paper. It's kind of thin, but you do have everything you actually need template-wise and token-wise in order to play. So that is a nice touch that it is included. Um, my first initial thought was, well, yeah, it would have been nice to have actual punch board and stuff, but you know what? That costs a lot more money. And let's keep in mind that this is a, you know, niche in a niche of small games. Okay, so these look to be tiles. They are paper, but on the other hand, they are quite large. And I'm going to take a wild guess that we're going to... Put them all together. So here we have another jungly one. We have what seems to be a shallow reef or fungal forest. I think it's fungal forest. Another fungal forest. They're all single sided as well, so uh, if I can get the rest out of the box. What else is in here? Forest with shallow waters or a river or something. Grassland. So you do have a bit of variety. And I mean, these are about mm, 
They look bigger than 8x11, maybe 9x12, but they're double-sided too, or double length, I should say. So again, it's it's a pretty nice, lengthy piece of mat to play on. Oh, cool. And then we actually have a rule book. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of Shadow Scene Song of Blades and Hero rule books, but you know what? That's okay because it's always nice. I can lend one of these to another player, and since I know the rules pretty well and have all the PDFs available on my phone, we can always give this to my next unsuspecting victim. And one of the nice things is I think just about every single one of the rule books has a quick rules overview of everything in there that you need to know how to play and has all the main special abilities. It's also in full color. There's not a whole lot in terms of fluff in this book, it looks like. Maybe there is at the beginning. No, this looks like it's like straight up into how to play. Oh, hey, I stand corrected. We've got a Deadwood Forest fluff piece there. That's kind of nice. And then we get into the scenarios. Okay, this is kind of cool, actually. So they give you all of the layout information that you need to play. You have this already included, so that is a nice handy-dandy thing. Um, there is an event table as well, so you have special events happening. They've got the victory conditions and how to finish the game, wild creatures. I wonder if it has anything in here about how to actually expand further past this. So I'm at least on scenario seven, eight scenarios. That's not bad. And then you have the actual stats as well in here. I didn't even look at the stat cards because I didn't even open up the miniature profile boxes yet, but we'll get to that. And I do know that in their latest 3D printed campaign they created actual 3d prints of a lot of these models so if you're interested they are available out there and a nice quick handy dandy rule summary as well so i gotta say this is a nice little book and it's got a lot of the extra rules in there too and that's just what's in the starter all right cool um let's take a look at the good stuff what we're all here for Whoa. the models okay so we have a big old stack. These are the new tarot size cards. Hey, and that's actually kind of nice. We have stack cards for all of the token monsters as well. And these are the full on regular stack cards. In addition to that, Tyrannus the Gray. I like this dude. We have a Harlequin Witch Slayer and a Salamander. I figured as much. We've got the Ancient Mech Sentinel for the Axamons, Kozakotl. And a dragon hunter. Reminds me of one of the other huntresses that they have. And just the order form there as well. Ah, cool. There's actually sleeves included. They're not the most fancy or obviously expensive sleeves. But again, that's a nice little touch that they managed to include them. So that way, as I try not to destroy the card, you can use the dry erase marker to take... It's toll on combat effects on your models. All right, moving on. Let's see the real stuff, right? Okay, these are the Ripper Claws. And I'm going to guess these are 3D prints. And the reason I'm going to guess that is because they have the bases already attached. It just seems like a nice sign. I don't think they're unicast because that's more of a Protoss thing. But despite me saying that they're 3D prints, that's not to say that they are not nice quality. You can definitely see there is a good level of detail there. And then, yeah, he needs to be put together. I think, are they actually different models? They are. They're in different poses. Cool. They both come on 30 millimeter bases. And then let's see here. This is our Enchantress. Coddle or whatever her name is. And again, just like almost all of the antimatter games, depending on either Deep Wars or Shadow Sea, they have the nice custom base toppers for just about every single model. And the level of detail is quite nice on our Enchantress friend here. Let's see the detail on her headdress, her gear, and all her stuff. Moving on to our Huntress. 
Ooh, I am happy that these survived transit, because that's always a worry. I am quite impressed. Well, it looks like... Was she supposed to have a additional bowstring down there? I can't tell. Maybe she's not supposed to have a bowstring. Maybe that's just a sprue piece that keeps everything connected. That's what I'm thinking, because there's nothing down here, and there is there. And I'm rambling in again. Custom base, and hopefully we will keep her javelin and arrows all in one piece. Model seems to be... Oh, what size are they? Well, they're obviously not Kingdom Death size. Um, I've got a Raging Heroes model I'm building. Okay, so they're closer to about 30 millimeter as opposed to 32 or 35. Uh, where's my old school marine? I knew we saw them around here somewhere. So, we'll have to find our witch hunter friend later. That's our huntress. Not too complicated. And then there is the golem. Golem. Hmm. He's actually just about one piece and it's pretty cool looking. He does come on a 40 millimeter meter base, and he does have a topper. He's got a peg here to connect to his base. I don't know where the other foot goes. Maybe like that. That'll be a neat one to try to paint to justice. Not too much cleanup involved, so if you're just getting into war games, or if you want everything all nice and conveniently located where you actually have everything you need to play the game, this might be a cool little thing to check out. All right, let's see. Here we have the... Draconid Empire, guys, which is what I like. We have a big honkin' salamander. Salamanders are on 40 millimeter bases. Nope, take that back. 50 millimeter bases. I should have known better. I know I've painted some. He's got his claws, and his jaw is a two piece set, and his big spiky tail is all one piece. And then the body itself. Very nicely scaled. Thankfully, his fins are all one piece still. I've had a problem with uh, reptile fins breaking off in transit, but he seems to have survived intact quite nicely. And he is definitely a lot bigger than his Ripper Claw friends. Here is our Harlequin Chameleon model. And I don't know if he's a 3D print or a resin cast, because he is on his base. And I mean, he could be a resin print, but the quality definitely is nice. If this is the kind of quality that they're going to be able to put out on their STL files, I'm quite impressed and am going to be looking forward to ordering quite a few more. I know they had a recent Kickstarter for their Uncharted Abyss for terrain and big gribblies. I might be grabbing some of those. And finally, we have the model that I am most looking forward to, and that is the gray... Dragon Man here. So he is a full regular resin cast as you can see here. Quite sharp details. I am liking what I see. And his tail and wings are a separate piece and again we have a nice custom base for him. Whoa! I'm gonna get all this stuff put together and then we'll take a look at the final models and definitely I will give you my two cents on all this. Alright, we've got our Axabal and ladies all finished up here. Um, I did glue the priestess to her base. I didn't know I glued the whole thing to the base. Okay, that's news to me. That's the joy of super glue. Our huntress friend is not fully glued just because it's going to be a hassle trying to get to those details underneath her skirt and scarves and all of her gear floating around there. Um, I went ahead and glued her arm onto her knee just to give her a little bit more stability and then I glued the arrow onto the bow as well and she does seem to have that kind of pose actually in the artwork anyway so I'm going to call it totally legit and there she can pose later and yeah I'll get some blue tack one of these days and we have the golem and again it's it's a nice big size model not too static and flat. And even our priestess, who's a little bit flat in terms of dimensions, I, I still think there is a nice amount of detail and variety of textures going on there. So I can't complain too much. She'll be a fun one to paint. As will our golem friend here is. Then we have our 
Draconid Empire guys, and my son has already expressed interest in using these. So, who am I to say no to children wanting more reptiles in the house? I gotta say, the chameleon I really liked. I mean, he he's a solid little model, and I'm sure he he seems like he was probably a resin print, and it just it came out really nice. Uh, I don't know if I can paint it to justice of the artwork, but we'll give it a shot. Our salamander friend is nice and big. We did have a little bit of an issue trying to get some of the parts in there, the tails and the necks, but that's nothing. A little bit of green stuff won't help fix before we finish painting him. So, not too worried about that. And we have our actual draconid friend here, who I am quite pleased with. Did need to cut a little bit deeper into his slots on his back to get the wings to attach. Tail went on fine. He had two little indentation holes on his base, but it doesn't make any sense why there's two, because there's only one peg on his foot, so I don't know what that's all about. And again, good size model. Um, we'll grab our Space Marine in a sec. And then we have the Ripper Claws, who... Of all the models in the set, we're probably the biggest hassle just trying to clean out all the little pieces of debris between their claws and attempting to not break their claws off in the process was a bit of a challenge. Uh, they might have lost a nail or two, but you know, oh well, you're not going to know other than me mentioning that. So for the most part, they're there. I gotta say, I do love the variety in terms of sizes of models. You have some large, you know, big pieces there. You've got some small, regular-sized humans. You've got your diminutive chameleon friend there, and your larger draconid dragon man as well. She wants to stay. There we go. And just to give you a good size indication, these aren't, like, super small models. I mean, they kind of look like it, I guess, on screen, but nope, they're right in there with a you know good assortment of 30 millimeter models and honestly the variety in terms of what you get in size shapes styles i mean there's a lot going on i guess to be really nitpicky looking at the overall package um the token stuff i guess was a little bit on the cheap side but you know other than that and that again is really just being nitpicky that's nothing that you can't actually find actual 3d options for anyways so i mean i can't really complain about that too much you have the complete rules you've got stats for everything involved in the game that you need um even all the counter stuff is in there you've got all your victory conditions special tokens everything that you need to actually legit play a complete campaign all right there in the box, which is more than I could say for a lot of other starter sets. Um, hopefully it's in a reasonable price range. I backed it on Kickstarter and I know I got a good deal and I've tended to pick up just about everything from Antimatter because I feel like, you know, they really use Kickstarter for what it's supposed to be in terms of coming up with new stuff and getting new products from idea to fruition so that's always a cool thing to help support um definitely give their website a check and hopefully we'll see these out in distribution for the masses soon as well with that said this is high lord tamberlane with obscurities and miniatures saying thanks for watching and we'll see you back here soon Bye bye